Sorry about that everybody, just kinda had to. <laughs> Welcome everybody, today we are going to be taking a look at the Bandai Movie Monster series Shin Ultraman Naranga, Gabora, and Shin Man himself. These sold out very quickly, they are now being scalped out the wazoo. I assume we can expect a restock of these, so if you missed out on any of them, don't feel too bad. I don't think Bandai is that heartless. But then again, I could be wrong there. <laughs> so we're going to go in this order, Naranga, Gabora, Bora, and then Shin Man, so let's get started. Yeah! Not too different from the original design that appeared in Episode 3, Science Patrol Move Out from the original Ultraman series, but still quite the major update. Much like Gabora, Naranga over here originated from a Baragon suit, particularly the Baragon suit from Frankenstein Conquers the World. But now that the knowledge crap is done, let's take a look at this tag. So I'm gonna be upfront, I am totally all for the very minimalistic tag design. Yes, this kind of does just look like a render of the monster on a grayscale background, but I do enjoy that. I enjoy the minimalism of it all, and it looks very nice, and this is a really awesome image of the Shin Ultraman version of Naranga. You know, the tag doesn't have much going for it. Shin Ultraman, I imagine that says Naranga, or Shin Naranga, or that doesn't match at all. Never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. Taking a look at the back of the tag over here, you can see Shin Ultraman, bunch of other stuff and then opening up the tag you can see the normal bandai movie monster stuff on the inside of the tag only this one says super Eye productions in this little square over here and not toho and you can scan a bunch of stuff there now on to the new segment of these videos <sighs> changing the battery mid take <laughs> that new segment being sleeving the tag yeah Although due to these figures being sold out and having no word of there being a restock, I am going to double sleeve these. You can never truly be too sure these days, man. I am actually still rather surprised these things sold out as quick as they did. I mean, I knew they would be like, you know, top sellers because I mean, come on, this is Shinji Higuchi and Hideaki Anno doing an Ultraman movie. And after, you know, the crazy amount of success from Shin Godzilla, it's like, of course, these are going to go, you know, above and beyond with everything. So, you know, just to be protective here, I would like to do a double sleeving. And look at that, it looks all nice and, and, and shiny and everything. I gotta make sure it actually reaches the bottom. But now, let's take a look at the figure itself. And here we have him. Shin Naranga. And I really do gotta sing my praises for the sculpt. The sculpt on this thing is utterly fantastic. Tons of little scales, lines, and little thingamajigs all over this guy's body. Even his back has ample amounts of detail. No matter where you look, it's gonna look nice and it's gonna look fantastic. They didn't painted to the tip of the tail as you can see there's still some stuff that you could have painted over here but uh, you, you've heard that complaint from me before one too many times you know i don't like it i don't like it but i do like this figure because jesus just look at all that detail even on the bottom of a tail that is some remarkable looking stuff you know i especially love all the little lines over here on the side and going on to uh, the thigh into the knee and into the feet as well just really 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 great looking stuff here yet again bandai you're killing it but just you know add a little bit more paint when you can right looking at these arms though oh man just fantastic i'm pretty sure they used the 3d models to uh, actually print these figures so if anything they look extremely accurate minus the paint <laughs> and i just look at that face oh my god God, he's got the big lips, the gums, the overgrown teeth over here. And he's got those weedy little Shin Godzilla eyes. Hamburger. And he's not all that wonk-eyed either. I mean, he still looks wonky as heck, but still, he doesn't look cross-eyed or anything like that. Very, very nice. But you know what's not very nice, though? <sighs> Uh, I can never escape not getting a scuffed horn from Bandai. I legitimately think I need to live in Japan in order to avoid this. 
But that's not all. You will also see some messily applied paint on the teeth over here, a little bit of the leaking from the lips and the gums. Um, a little bit, oh God, what is that? Is that just a uh, mist paint? Is that a paint shave? No, okay, that's just uh, a thicker application of the paint. Mind you, this isn't as bad as I've seen on a few others of these where the red is kind of like all over the teeth or they weren't fully painted, mind you. <laughs> so I'm not going to complain too much, but eh, quality control here and there, not the best. <laughs> this dude looks like he's begging for a cheeseburger. Looking at the bottom of the neck, the shoulders, the chest, the arms, the hands, again, we have a lot of fantastic detail going on here. Bandai, yet again, showcasing that they can be beautiful when it comes to the mold and the sculpt, even though these were essentially printed out from the 3D renders of the characters from the movie. Is that confirmed? Uh, that might not, or may or may not be confirmed. Either way, Everything is looking really, really nice. Just a little bit lackadaisical on the paint. Speaking of paint, we got a couple little bit of uh, rubbish going on here on the nails. Uh, the tips are missing some paint. Not as bad on the other side though, which is nice. It might not even be that at all. It might've just been how it was painted. Taking a look at Naranga's Naranga, <laughs> you can see that there is going to be a highlight of this weird copperish brown, and that's pretty much it till you get to the toe. Specification wise, I don't know why that was chosen to be painted. I mean, it does break everything up from the face to the crotch, so that's nice. Would have been nice if uh, the chest got a little bit of that. But looking at the crotch over here, you can see more of that fantastic detail in that random highlight. The toes look awesome. A lot of really great detail on the kneecaps into the shins, into the feet over here. Yet again, these look like uh, they were spray painted on. I actually really do enjoy that particle effect though. I know it's not technically accurate, but I don't, I, don't, I don't care. The other pair of toes looking just fine. Got a little bit more of the uh, the friction paint rub off on one of the toes over here. But again, fantastic detail. Ooh, we got some hold up there. We got some particles over here from 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 the lips. As you can see, let that stick in your mind for a bit. And look at this. Look at that. Maybe he was cleaning himself. I don't know. Or trying to eat a leg. This guy does look like he. He would like to eat stuff. I don't know. I'm not assuming that he's a heavy eater or anything like that. I'm honestly just working with what you're giving me here. Now, if I were to be a crybaby complainer, I would crybaby complain about the fact that the legs over here are painted, but the elbows are not. But then again, you could just look at the tag and see that the elbows were never painted yellow. So there you go. No issues. I do wish we got more of that brown highlight on this guy, though. And before I forget to mention these, the antennas are part of the mold. They are not separate. I have seen a lot of fans actually customizing these figures that make sure that these are separate parts. Uh, this is another destroyer moment where something that was small was actually fused and part of the mold instead of being separate. I do wish that this was separate from the mold, especially since I paid, um, what is it, five to six extra dollars for it. One, like, little extra thing, that's all. That's it. But... You know, since they're not, and they are just like empty void space over here, they do look nice. Yeah, yeah, on both sides they look really, really nice. Great detail over here too, in between the armor plating on his face. And back here they have ample amounts of color, even on the dead space there, but hey, not gonna complain. Looks nice, looks nice, yeah. yeah. I mean, realistically, that could have been a little bit longer. In terms of articulation for our burger begging boy, you will be able to go all the way around at the arms, and you will be able to go all the way around at the legs. Nothing at the tail, and nothing at the head. A little upsetting when it comes to articulation, but again, if you're expecting massive amounts of articulation from a Bandai vinyl, uh, bring your mind down a little bit. So when it comes to Shin Naranga over here, I do enjoy this figure a lot. Love the ample amounts of detail that you're going to be able to find all across this figure. Love the very mustardy yellow on grayscale paint job that they went with this thing. Do wish there was a little bit more of that coppery brown to kind of break the gray up from the yellow. And yeah, I, I, I like it. I do wish that the head was a little bit more articulated because it looks like it can move, but that's just the glue there lying to me. And with that being said, I'm not upset with this figure, but I will say this. Shin Naranga is the weakest of the Shin Ultraman Bandai Movie Monster Series figures. Yes, yes, I'm going there. Yes, yes, fantastic details and a couple of misplaced pieces of paint. And everywhere you look, it is impressive stuff, but I do feel his co-star is the better looking figure. Time for Gabora.
Ah yes, the Drill Boy, my favorite. Gabora over here appeared in episode 9 of the original Ultraman series. The episode was titled Lightning Operation, and he did look radically different from how he looks here. I definitely do think Gabora got the more updated design than Naranga did, and I really do enjoy how he looks, both his original Showa era look and how he looks here. But enough about that, let's take a look at his tag. <sighs> Tag time! It's like Turbo Time, except I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger and you're not that one kid from Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Monogamy. Anyway, yet again, we are getting this beautiful minimalistic style tag over here with the 3D render of Gabora. Shin Gabora, I should say. Grayscale, Shin Ultraman, Gabora, Shin, um, Shin something or other, I don't know. Anybody who can read Japanese, please let me know. On the back, same as Naranga, it's going to say Shin Ultraman and a bunch of other stuff, and then you're going going to open up the tag and see the normal Bandai Movie Monster series stuff in there, including the Super Riot Productions logo in there. And now we will top load this into a nice protective case. So I said that I preferred Gabora over Naranga. I don't know if it's because of the very uh, Evangelion angel looking head or if the fact that uh, he has an entire drill skin over his head. I don't know what it is, but I just enjoy the design a lot more. I have seen their respected first episodes and they're all really cool on their own. And that's about as much as I can say because they are just monsters. They were both monsters that were built on top of um, Baragon suits, as I stated before. And if you look at this figure, you already you can see that the arms are nearly the same the le and the legs are nearly the same so um yeah <laughs> gonna save me a lot of trouble but the tag nice and protected yet again i'm sure we can expect a restock in i don't think bandai would leave collectors hanging like that please do not succumb to scalper prices these are vinyl figures and i know i shouldn't be talking considering what happened last year with godzilla versus kong but anyway let's get to talking about this figure's paint and detail now just so i don't sound like a crazy idiot Let's take a look at the arms and the legs for both of these figures before moving on any further. I don't know, I can definitely see some similarities between how they look, but the way that the spikes are on Gabora's elbow over here as compared to Naranga, they feel a lot less bunched up. Like, I definitely think they're from the same mold with maybe some differences. You guys are seeing what I'm saying, right? They do look slightly similar. I, I know the legs do. The legs are a little bit more obvious because this is more bigger shapes. This is more smaller shapes and everything. The feet look pretty much the same. But like I said before, both of the monsters came from a Baragon suit, so maybe Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi did that on purpose. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just crazy and I'm just seeing similarities that aren't there. Anyway, Shin Gabor's design is awesome. I love it. I actually love it <laughs> a lot. And even though he doesn't feature a lot of crazy paint, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be my favorite of the three Shin Ultraman figures from Bandai Movie Monster series. But enough of that, let's take a closer look. Starting at the tail, we have drills. The tail itself is a giant drill, it looks like, and it is all this very shiny copper. Very eye-popping, very nice, really does add to the overall... Um, I guess aesthetic of the figure looking very very nice detail plain But it's supposed to look like that and what I really like is that you can actually see the fleshy tail under this drill tail over here I imagine this is just the underside of his tail. Uh, don't quiz me on that I wouldn't know but the detail on this is nice a little bit on the muted side It's more so once you get towards the legs over here that you're going to start seeing a lot of fantastic detail And just look at that look at all that fantastic detail. It's awesome. Yes I'm working a little bit backwards as compared compared to what I did with Naranga, but since we're at the tail, might as well take a look at the crotch. This guy, yet again, has a highlight on his crotch, but this kind of moves into the sides and the hips area. So that really does help break up the figure's look in general, because for the most part, he is just, he's, 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 he's gray. You see that? He's, he's mostly gray. And all of this over here is definitely helping break everything up so he just doesn't look like a gray wad. So the legs look fantastic. The detail on both the the feet and the paint on the toes is very nice. No rubbing off of the paint on these toes, which is fan dang -tastic. And speaking of toes, let's take a look at Shin Naranga's claws over here. Very sharp, a lot of fingers going on there. I'm not seeing any major uh, 
rubbing off of the paint on any of the claws over here, so that's nice. And in taking a look at the arms, you can see more of that brown on his shoulder blade. Moving into his arm, it's just gonna be all gray. Then you're gonna get the spray particle effects for the fingernails on the fingers themselves. You'll see the exact same thing on the other side, and I spy with my little eye. What's all that about, Bandai? Why you do this to me, fam? The detail on the chest is really, really nice. I also really like this around the neck as well. Naranga, for the most part. Oh yeah, look at that. I'd call that a difference, for the most part. And now the most interesting part of Naranga, <laughs> that being his head. <laughs> You're just so handsome. Or beautiful. Or both. How do you like that? So yet again, gotta sing my praises for the sculpt on this thing, because all the little detail on the fleshy little drill that Gabora's got going on, on his head, for his head, with his head, whatever you want to call it, it's all there. It's looking fantastic. You're gonna get a lot of really, really awesome detail going all around the drill bit tailor for a head that he has. Ooh, some missing paint over here. Ooh, actually, look at that. Ooh, yikes. Yikeroonies, Bandai. What's going on there? And now for the detail on the inside. Very fleshy, very nice. Kind of looking like a gigantic tongue just enveloping my man's head and everything. Very, very cool. But looking at my guy's head, it's nice. It's very alien looking. Again, reminds me of something out of Evangelion. Got all the different eyes up here. Got those dots. Got the teeth over here, which... Eh, teeth are a little sloppily painted on mine. Just a little bit. The other side looks a lot better. I do wish some shading would have been done on the eyes and for the mouth, but beggar can't be chooser. Because just look at all that beautiful detail. <laughs> no, that's, that's seriously just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful detail. And that is something that I'm obviously not afraid to communicate. This figure looks awesome. It really, really does. But does it move awesome? I... I, I think so. I think so. Let's get started. So as per Bandai norm, you can move uh, the arms all the way around. You can move the legs all the way around as well. But Gabora has what Naranga doesn't, and that is head articulation. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh. Uh, isn't that nice? You can actually move his head, but golly gee, you can probably already tell. This isn't going to be a surprise for any of you. But yes, you can even move the drill part of his head. The head in the center will stay still. You do not have to worry about that changing, although that would have been cool. But again, vinyl figure. <laughs> and honestly, that just looks that just looks awesome. It really, really does. And <sighs> Just want to take a closer look here. The detail on the bottom side, <laughs> like the throat and everything into the jaw over here is fantastic. It really, really is. And then just uh, swapping that to the opposite side. Look at that. Look at that fantastic detail. Gosh dang. A little bit more fantastic uh, paint would have been nice. <laughs> but for the most part, the fleshy drill bit Shin Gabora is fantastic. And yet again, my very favorite. But as you all know, there is one more figure that we need to talk about and it is time for and now last but not least eh, shin man <laughs> there he is the vibey boy himself shin ultraman just standing there vibing feeling himself whatever the heck you want to say this figure is simple clear cut to the point really everything you're seeing here is all you're really gonna get but don't worry uncle rob is gonna show you the way <laughs> And as we've been doing, let's take a look at this tag. This one, a little bit less on the minimalistic side. This is like the first image we ever got of Shin Ultraman some time ago. Very nice. The image that started it all, all the memes, <laughs> everything, it's there. It's a Shin Ultraman everywhere. It looks nice. I would really, really like this as like a poster or some sort of an art print at some point, just so I can start decorating the walls with Ultraman stuff since I've become quite the Ultraman fan as of recently. And on the back of the tag, it'll say Shin Ultraman. And as we've seen now three times before, it's going to say the same stuff on the inside of the tag plus Super Ride Productions. Let's get to tagging this guy. And by tagging, I mean 
putting the tag in one of those top loaders. I do this because I love you. I promise. So this really is just a pretty basic figure. It's not going to have crazy amounts of articulation. In fact, if you've been collecting the Ultra Heroes 500 line, you'll probably notice a bunch of similarities. You've probably already noticed some similarities, but uh, there we go with the tag and done. Damn, if he didn't have trouble standing before, he's definitely gonna have it now. Yes, um, unfortunately, my Shin Man has, uh, some issues standing. He had issues standing before the tag, like, all of this was put on it, and unfortunately, he still has issues with standing. So, maybe, hopefully, if I put his arms out, that'll some balance there we go this is how i'm gonna have to stand him or i'm gonna have to lean him up against something and as of right now that's my real only gripe with this figure everything else i really really like but let's take a closer look at him shall we shin ultra vibe man over here is rather simple in design i've seen a lot of people say that it's this really nice mixture of like all three types of the different ultraman designs i'm very new to the ultraman fan base so I just see Ultraman, <laughs> but apparently uh, the type, these are the type B feet or the, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to stop now with the factual speak so I don't anger anybody. But for the most part, this is just a standard Ultraman. Unfortunately, I've got a mark here and here on the silver paint. Honestly, not that crazy. I've seen a lot of people talking about this random thing that's in Shin Ultraman's ear because it's not in the other one. And thank you again to my friend Corey for explaining that this might actually be a replica of the mechanism that was in the original Ultraman mask to light the eyes up. Ano and Higuchi are going all out. <laughs> They're clearly going all out. The eyes are this nice off-white creamy color they still have that weird looking texture to them we've still got the mouth the chin he do be having some kind of a leafy is here chin very weak but he's got the ears he's got the uh little sail head he's got going on there looking like he can freaking uh, clean your fingernails with that <laughs> and for those wondering why this ultraman does not have a color timer the original design of ultraman or one of the original people to actually draw and paint ultraman did so without the color timer so who knows, maybe they're going that far back with things. But again, this figure, very, very basic. And basic's not a bad thing either, because for the most part, he looks awesome. I love this. If this is what the King series Shin Ultraman's going to look like, uh, sign me up. <laughs> now you are going to see some flubbed paint over Mia. A little bit of flubbed paint over Mia. And even a little bit over Mia. You see that? But for the most part, I really don't mind as compared to how some other Shin Ultraman figures have been looking with the paint chipping off and everything. I think I lucked out pretty good. Looking at the arms over here, we can see some semblance of muscles. We can see that classic red and silver just coating this Ultraman's body. Flipping Shin Man to the other side, you're going to see more silver, more red, more silver, more red. You're going to have the pointed shoes and everything. You're going to get more fantastic muscular detail. You're going to get some fan fantastic looking hands although this pinky looks like he's got a little bit of a case of jaundice or something just looking a little extra budgy but then again i got some budgy sausages myself i'm not going to hate or anything like that you can see the knuckles <laughs> i'm gonna stop <laughs> for the most part i would say Jin ultraman looks awesome do wish he could stand on his own but let's get into articulation and it's very very simple you'll be able to go all the way around at the arms all the way around around the world not going to sing the rest of that because i don't want to get copyright struck and you'll be able to go all the way around at the hoist no there is no articulation at the knees i thought there would be but apparently this is just a separate part of the mold or something yet yeah, um not moving not moving at all actually as you could just see so yeah i don't think i'm even going to attempt putting this thing on the turntable so let's just move on to the final figure now shall we Oh, oh dang, that's right. I only, I only got the three. I could have swore I got four. <laughs> The 
The first three figures from the Shin Ultraman Bandai Movie Monster series line are looking really, really good. Despite the lack of there's some paint on these figures, which I mean, at this point, we should all just expect. The detail is fantastic. The articulation is pretty basic, side for Shin Gabora over here. And Ultraman's looking pretty fantastic too. If you're expecting more from vinyl figures, like I said earlier on in the video, bring those expectations down a little bit. But at the same time, bring them up a bit as well because these figures look a lot better than I thought they would, truly. Not that I was expecting anything bad or anything like that. But if the hype for Shin Ultraman wasn't already astronomical, it definitely is now. Seeing these monsters with their new design, seeing Ultraman with this brand new-ish design, it's all successfully building up the hype to release day, and I can't wait to finally sink my eyeballs into this flick. I mean, look at my name, Shin Rob Jira. It's an obvious hook and line to Shin Godzilla. Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi created one of my favorite Godzilla films of all time. So of course, the guys who are responsible for that making an Ultraman movie is going to get me hyped. And of course, from the creator of Evangelion, even though he's only producing and writing, that still has me hyped because Anno still has a major point in this production. And I'm sure it's going to hurt us all very, very much. <laughs> but for the most part, I am enjoying what I paid for with these figures. Again, loving the details. Where there's paint, I am liking it as well. And uh, sign me up for that King Series Shin Ultraman. I know it's coming, Bandai. Just let me know when. <laughs> but that's about going to wrap it up from me, everybody. I will see you all soon i do so hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like maybe drop a subscribe i'm gonna be talking about a lot of ultraman stuff this year ultra act shin man review coming tomorrow patrons thank you so much for being shin rob jira patrons social media links in the description below including to my merch page on redbubble and yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.